Welcome along, guys. Well, if you cast your minds back to the comparison review me and Greg did with the Suzuki 1050 V-Strom and the new Africa Twin, then cut the top there, you remember that we both voted the V-Strom as the better road bike because we never took those bikes off road so this was it was a road test and we voted the v-strom the better road bike out of the two well i have once again got myself a v-strom in a delightful orange and white this time and we're going to go out today it's going to be a mucky day even though it doesn't look too bad at the moment we're expecting lots of rain i'm going to do some real world riding on this machine motorways in town and i'm going to see if i can back up my claims that this is a fantastic road bike for munching miles so without further delay before the rain actually starts chopsy roll the intro So before we get into it, let me just point out a couple of things this bike does have. This is the XT version. So this is 11,390, I believe, for the XT version. The non-XT version is just under £10,000. So a bit cheaper than this, but this is probably the one you're looking at buying. The XT has the spoked wheels, look a million times better. It also has the IMU, so it's got more functions like the cruise control switchable ABS etc you know a cornering ABS it's also got like things like the engine guards but this bike also has the some of the accessories the luggage they that this metal luggage doesn't come standard it should also have a top box with this but I didn't want a top box as well I took that off this one also has the skid pan at the bottom that isn't standard it also has the spotlights but we'll go around this bike properly with a decent camera on the walk around in a bit so for now let's just jump on this bike is quite heavy, I mean it's an adventure bike, they're always, always weighty. This one's no exception, 247 kilos fully fueled and it's got a 20 litre tank. And this is as off-road as this video is going to get. <laughs> this is the off-road section of the video. This, if you're looking for an adventure bike where you want to do a bit of off-road, then look elsewhere. The V-Strom is not an adventure bike to take off-road. With a little bit of gravel like that, yes fine it's got a 19 inch front wheel so you know not the best size front wheel for going off road it's also got limited ground clearance as well so you know if you're looking for an adventure bike to have a proper adventure on some may say to go off road then really look more towards something else this is very much a road bike first and foremost but there's nothing wrong with that because that is where 95% of these bikes are going to be used. So why compromise the road, the road holding and handling by having a 21 inch front wheel? So a few specs about this bike. As I mentioned, 247 kilos. Uh, it's 105 brake horsepower. So this new version, even though it's the same engine, you know, as the old version, the same capacity. It is still a 1,039cc, I think it is, but they've called it a 1050, even though the capacity hasn't changed. They've done some tweaks, pistons, cams, valves. They've got another five brake horsepower out of the bike. The bike is a little bit heavier. It's gone up a couple of kilos from last year's version, but the, the main change with this bike really is the IMU. They've also updated the dash. It's more in line with the GSX-R dash but it is just an LCD still. There's still no TFTs on any of the Suzuki bikes. But that's no bad thing because I'm really over TFTs to, to a degree. They're no longer the, oh wow, a TFT that they used to be. So that dash, even though it is a bit Casio, it's got a lot of information on it. All the information you ever need is displayed on that dashboard. It's just done all at once. Comfort wise, when I've just stepped on there, as you would expect for an adventure bike, it's exceptionally comfortable. This bike also has an adjustable seat height, but you need tools to do it. I think this one has actually sat set in its lower position. I could, it could almost be a little bit higher for me because my my ankles feel quite close to my ass because the seat is quite low, but the pegs are sort of quite high-ish. So um, my legs feel quite high. So I've got quite a lot of weight on my bum. The controls 
a lovely, lovely clutch feel. Gearbox or Suzuki's is always good, easy to find neutral. It could be a little bit more clunky perhaps as you go in and out of the gears than some other Suzuki's, but it's still very positive. Handling is really good because you have got that 19 inch front wheel and street travel suspension. You know, you've not got the really long travel suspension, which causes a lot of dive when you're on the road. You know, and it's soft as well because it's got to be able to handle the bumps off-road. So if, you, if, they're, if you're building an adventure bike to go on and off-road, it will do, it won't, it, you know, you'd say that it can't do any of those two things perfectly. It's always a compromise when you're building a bike to go off-road and on-road. Suzuki, I'm pleased to say, haven't gone down that route. You know, they've made this very much a road bike. So it's really lovely to ride on the road. It handles beautifully. It's a bit wet today, but I've been out on the dry on one of these and you can chuck them around. It gives brilliant feedback from the tarmac, which you lose when you've got a 21 inch front wheel and also you know, semi off-road tires as well. If your tires are also compromised because you may take the odd gravel lane, then you're going to notice that on the road with the tyres as well. So for me, they've taken the right approach if you want an off-road version. But perhaps they should produce an off-road version of the V-Strom. But this one, the standard one, is very much a road bike. This being a V-Twin, yes, this is still a V-Twin. It's not a parallel twin. It's a genuine V-Twin. You get a lot of grunt. It's super grunty, this. It's fast. Between 2,000 and 5,000 revs, it absolutely flies. It's much more grunty than the Scrambler 1200 I've got at home at the moment. Open it up. That is quicker than the Scrambler, which is a 1200 parallel twin. This isn't as fast as the Africa twin, and we proved that in the drag race we did uh, when we had both those bikes in that comparison. This is a fair bit slower than the Africa Twin. The Africa Twin, I think, is 110 brake horsepower, and the Africa Twin is also a little bit lighter than this. So if it's performance you're looking for, straight line performance, the Africa Twin is faster. Make no mistake. But this has still got a lot of grunt, a load of grunt. And when you're in town, but that's the type of riding you're going to be doing on this bike, you know, overtaking power, nipping in and out of traffic, it's absolutely ideal. Ideal, I say. The screen is adjustable, but I could do with lowering it a bit because it's because I'm because I'm talking the helmet. It's causing a bit of steam up because I'm not getting enough airflow because of the screen. So I may pull over and just adjust that because unfortunately you can't adjust the screen height on the fly. Let's just pull in the church a minute and we'll have a little. Uh, I'll show you the screen and how you adjust it. So the screen is adjustable here, so it's like a big clip which you then need to raise up and down and spin it round. It's round the wrong way I'd say. Oh there we go. So yeah, so you lift that up, move it up and down and then put it back down again. So you, you could never do that on the fly unless you're going to hang over the front. It'd be extremely dangerous to try that. Even I wouldn't try that. From the back, it's quite a wide old beast with those panniers on, so you've got to be a little bit careful with filtering. The, the, they're a bit, little bit wider than the bars, so if it's close on the bars, be careful. Panniers could hit. Turning circle, it's pretty good actually. You can get it in pretty tight, pretty tight, that's the lock. Yeah, it's pretty nice tight turning circle. Handy for manoeuvring. Grunt. Hey, make those lights. Plenty of punch. Oh, it's so much punch. I tell you, I haven't ridden many bikes recently, as I said in my Scrambler review, and this, it comes to something when you've gone out in a V-Strom and you think it actually feels quick. <laughs> it's really punchy, this. I can't believe it was out dragged by the Africa Twin as much as it was, because it feels really punchy now. Low down power, you know, this is one and a half thousand revs second gear it's not jerky it's not that that's very very tractable that engine you can really take it right down the rev range almost to idle and it pulls very smoothly you know because because that is normally sort of one of the downfalls with a v-twin is how 
you know, how, how if you go down below their usable power range, they can be very chunky, very jerky. No such problems with this. It seems very tractable, that motor. Right down the rev range, very tractable, which is what you want. But there's nothing worse than giving the old kangaroo in up the road because you've you've gone outside of that usable range. Now I'm not saying this is the best adventure bike out there because obviously there are better ones. What I'm saying is this is a brilliant adventure bike for munching miles on, for actually using as your daily commuter because it really is a bike you can do starship mileages on because that engine is just been around for so long it's so proven you know this this thing can do a hundred thousand miles I'd say no problem at all it's something if I you know and I, I wouldn't want to buy a premium bike and then just run it in the winter on the shitty road I wouldn't want to do that but I would do it to one of these because this is this is a tool more than anything I think of this as a real tool for riding you know this isn't about joining a club or you know uh, it, you know it's a practical tool this machine and that is what i like about it and they've sexied it up i mean the v-strom was never sexy you know it wasn't a sexy bike it looked a little bit bland before they've addressed that with this new styling it does no longer look bland it's you know it's retro it's the dr big you know it's that styling with the beak We'll do a water head in a minute, but I'm sure you've seen these already. You know, this bright paintwork. They've tried to, the image of the bike, they've tried to improve it. But in its, in it, and they have. I think it is a great success, and I really do like the look of this machine. Okay, bare motorway, 70 miles an hour. Oh, it's, it's just easy. 4,000 revs. Literally not straining the motor, absolutely poodling along at 4,000 revs. I mean, let's be honest, this is where the bike is going to spend most of its time. And even with that screen in the lower position now, I'm getting no buffeting on my helmet either. There's none of that horrible vibration you can get. And that's with the screen at the lower position. I'm tall, I'm six foot two. Obviously that depends on your height, but you, you can see over the screen. You're not looking through the screen, which I don't like. The bike has also got cruise control, the XT version. Let's put it on. There's a button to enable it here, and then what do you do? Push that up, push that down, yeah, push that down. That's now set at 70. Now that's the sort of thing the V-Strom was always missing to make it the ultimate tool for the motorways. What more do you want? Heated grips. <laughs> the bike doesn't have any heated grips. They're an optional extra. It's a shame they didn't include heated grips on the XT version, just to finish off the package. If you do want to stretch your legs, another thing I love about adventure bikes is you can just stand up on the pegs. Rest your ass. You know, this is why adventure bikes are good. If you've been able to do that, if you're on a long trip, you can stand up, rest your bum. Very, very good. Morning. Morning. So this is when cruise control is good, when you're stuck in a 40 limit like this. Set the cruise at 40, sit back, relax. Sit back, relax, you don't have to worry. Ah, lovely. Oh, we've got a bit of dry road here. We've got a bit of dry road. We could. Oh, it's just flowing. and it's just, It just flows in and out of the bends. Yeah, it's lovely. Really, really nice. Really, really nice handling. This is, we know, it's the feedback you get from the front wheel with the 19 inch. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see a 17 inch, you know, just go the whole hog, put complete road bike size tyres on it. I'd like to try that, see what it's like actually, an adventure bike with 17 inch wheels. <laughs> Some sort of hybrid supermoto adventure bike. That could be quite interesting. We'll take it into Portsmouth. This is Portsmouth. Oh, we've also got spotlights on this. This has got the optional spotlights, so let's put the spotlights on. There we go, we're now spotlighted up. Oh yeah, no one's going to pull out on us now. Stay there, stay there, i got the spotlights on. Mirrors are great, you know, a bit boring, but this is an adventure bike, this is a practical machine. You want decent mirrors and, you know, despite this being a V-twin, there's no vibration in the mirrors. Actually, 
talking of vibrations, there's no there's no real vibrations on this bike. When you rev it, it gets a little bit vibey. As the revs increase, the vibes increase. And you can feel a little bit through the bars. You know, it's, it's the same as the Africa Twin from a vibration point of view. It's absolutely fine. So this is Portsmouth, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, North End. This is coming down in a southerly direction through Portsmouth. Quite an old town this. It used to be a cinema when I was a young lad. I used to go to a cinema there. It used to be an Odeon. Now gone. St Mary's Church. Biggin. That's when it's nice to have a bit of talk, just to get you through lights like that when you're in town. Don't have to change down, just open the throttle and you've got talk. Um, da -da 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 -da. Where should we go? Which lane do we want? We want to go straight over, which is uh, not this lane. But because we've got instant drive, we'll be able to be a bit cheeky here. I'll indicate so this Mr. Asda, Mr. Asda knows where I'm going. Come on! Oh, he's going for it. <laughs> Stay. You know, it may not be the most exciting thing in the world, this, you know, let's be honest. It's a tool for doing a job, and it is great at doing that job. Just easy to ride, mile muncher. That now looks pretty decent too. Mile muncher, da da da. Yes, it's starting to rain, as promised. Just, yeah, it's starting to rain a little bit now. So we can test that bit of the weather protection. As I say, you know, this isn't Malaga or wherever they launched this bike. This is real world streets of Portsmouth in December. You know, this is winter riding in the UK where this bike is going to be used. Let's be honest. And it's doing a damn fine job so far. There are a few things as depressing as a, a British seaside in December. <laughs> Seaside's great in the summer, but come the winter and the seaside just gets all a little bit depressing, doesn't it? This is uh, the castle. That is uh, Southsea Castle, Henry VIII, Henry VIII's castle, basically. It's all sort of underground a little bit. There's a lot of history in Portsmouth. Obviously, it's a very old town, the naval capital of England, you know, since forever. So there's a lot of history here, and there's a lot of great sightseeing to do here as well. That's, uh, as I say, that is Henry VIII's Southsea Castle. This is the D-Day Museum, I believe. Looks like they've got one of the landing craft there from, uh, from D-Day, is that? No, don't know what that is. Don't know what that is, but I think that's the D-Day Museum. Well, that's one of the ferries coming in. That's one of the forts out there. There's, there's five forts, Spitbank Fort. One of them's called Spitbank. They're the forts. It's very foggy today. You're not going to see much. But uh, actually, let's pull over here now. I wonder if the hovercraft's running today. There's also a hovercraft which runs to the Isle of Wight. So the Isle of Wight is about five miles away. I don't know, five miles? Probably five miles. I think it's the most expensive stretch of water to cross for the distance it is. The most expensive five miles to take a car to the Isle of Wight, it's about 80 quid. It's 45 pounds to take a motorbike to the Isle of Wight for five, a five mile crossing. Absolutely ridiculous. The most expensive stretch of water to cross in the world. There's also a hovercraft which comes, there's a hovercraft, the hovercraft is in. It may be it's in for maintenance, maybe it's not running. No, it's running, it's lit up, it's flashing. Should we have a look at the hovercraft? Do you want to see the hovercraft? This, I think this is the only passenger hovercraft crossing in the world where they're still using hovercrafts. The only one in the world. No, you're not so interested in the V-Storm, are you? You're more interested in hovercraft now. Let's try and get off without dropping it. Oh, do you want to see the hovercraft? Bloody do, don't you? Let's get the decent camera out then. As I say, the only uh, commercial hovercraft crossing in the world, this. I don't know how much it is to go across on. I used, I've been across on the hovercraft since I was a little, a little kid. There it goes. British invention, of course, the hovercraft. F 
floats on a cushion of air. That's how it can go over the water and on land. <laughs> he wasn't expecting a hovercraft lesson, was he? Part of this video. Here she goes. They used to do hovercrafts across to the Arlock to France, of course, back in the 70s, but they were, I think they were decommissioned in the end, not sure why. I'm not a hovercraft expert. There she goes. It's going to nail it now. Go on, nail it! There you go, hovercraft. That's not something you see every day these days. You're going quite slow because it's foggy, I think. Normally you'd be nailing it and whizzing off. There we are. That is one of the uh, the forts I said about. I'm sorry, I can't zoom in any further. And it's only got four times optical zoom, this camera. But that's one of the forts. I think there's five of them. I think they were built in World War II to stop, you know, obviously U-boats and stuff and, and, and enemy ships coming into Portsmouth Harbour. This is a history lesson. This is a history lesson now. There is the V-Strom. Oh yeah. Sorry, I can't back it up. Adventure bike, innit? Adventure bike, innit, mate? South Sea Fair. <laughs> what a depressing place to be in the middle of winter. What a depressing place to be, anyway. Let's try a bit of filterage here. Remember the panniers, chops? Remember the panniers? I, I, I'm giving up already. That's too tight. I don't think Mr. Mercedes would appreciate a great big gash. Negatives with this bike. There's a there's a couple of little niggles. Let's call them. One being when you put your feet down, it's right where the footrests are. So I think if you're a bit shorter, when you put your foot down, you're going to find the your footrest right in the way of where your feet want to go down. So that is something which the old bike suffered, and this is the same. So you've got to sort of position your feet out a bit further. And uh, if you say if you're struggling with height riding one of these anyway. That is uh, going to be a bit of a problem for you. I you uh, no heated grips as standard would probably be, or the XT version should really have heated grips. That would be probably my only other criticism. Um, these handguards are also a little bit on the waggly side. They're sort of just clipped on here. Again, it's fine. It's not a problem, but you know, if, if that, it's what they're like. But little things like that. The fit and finish of the bike was very good. I'd like to be able to adjust the screen on the move and there really is you know oh, can i oh, it's loosened it I, yeah i got it up uh, you can do it <laughs> you can do it but it's not easy and you shouldn't really be doing that it's not particularly safe jobs what you're doing but it is possible but i'd like that to be easier to adjust while you're on the fly so there we go i hope you've enjoyed my tour of portsmouth <laughs> and a little bit about the beast job 10.50. So there we go guys, thanks for watching, really appreciate it. I don't know what is going to be happening with bike-wise, you know, I had a few things lined up, but with the the latest announcement of lockdowns, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen regarding the bikes I was planning to get to ride. What we can do, of course, though, is continue with the SMCR build series in the garage, so that's what we're going to be banging through, and then when that's done, we'll continue with the Ducati hypermotard restoration as well but uh, i will see you soon have a good one guys stay safe is the main thing if you're riding enjoy it be careful there's no better way to unwind than getting on a motorcycle so <laughs> enjoy guys and i'll speak to you soon take care this is power level one which is full power <laughs> Down, I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Never mind getting beard up. Give me this any day of the week. Ha ha ha!